Hey, hello everyone and welcome back to Planner App version 2. After the previous session, we have implemented the logout, we have the login. <coughs> it's working uh, from the UI perspective and from an architecture or infrastructure perspective. Right now, we will move back to the API, uh, to the register process. We will implement the form, the validation of the, of the DTO, the data transfer object, and in addition for that, we are going to implement uh, yeah, the logic of the form, just like the same what we have done with a login. So here we have an endpoint called register. If we open up this one, you can see that it, take, it takes an object called register request. So we have to create this. So let's first start with this one. So our, yeah, here we have some bending changes. Let's go to get Kraken and say implement the login display. Let's push this changes. Okay, cool. Now, I'll go to the models and I will click add class and then I'll call this one register request. So here we are in this page. Now let's go for this one. Let's copy this JSON sample that represents this object and let's go to edit. Uh, paste special and paste JSON as classes. So if you click like that, you can see that it turned that JSON from the clipboard and paste it as a class, which is great. This is what you're actually looking for. Let's call it register request. Let's make those capital letter. Okay, interesting. Password. Okay, you can use control shift U to be able to switch between capital letter and small letter for the letter you're on, like Control shift u or Control u and you get it back to small letter, which is good. Now, as I've said in the previous video, I'm not going to use here the traditional validation that we have, like email address, the data annotations. Instead, I'm going to use the fluent validation, which is another approach. Somehow, in general, it's much better than the, the data annotations, but uh, it's disadvantage actually just one thing because it takes more codes and more files to be able to handle that but gives you like a lot of flexibility more than the data annotation that actually built in within .NET. So, or even when you create your own, like here you have control over, um, for example, the messages, the localization, whatever, those are just little examples and you can add some logic behind the validation, which is much more flexible than the annotations. But anyway, so I'm going to put the validation in the shared folder because they could be used within also uh, another applications like, um, like for example, uh, let's say other .NET client or maybe they could be shared also with the server. So here we don't have the server because it's a separated application but uh, after this course we are going to build a .NET MAUI version for this application so we can share this uh, directly. So the first thing I will do is Go to dependencies, manage NuGet packages, and make sure to install Fluent Validation. So let's search for Fluent Validation. I'm going to share the command to install that in the description box below. Okay, that's great. This is cool. Now, okay, fantastic. Now, let's create a folder. Call it add folder, I'll call it validators, validators, ah, sorry, there is an S, cool, now I'll create a class, and I'm going to call this class register request, register request validator, cool, let's mark it as public, and come over here, and it should implement the class called I abstract. oh, sorry, abstract validator, just like that, which is this is the base cloud that you should use. And here you define the type and the type we are going to validate is register request. So just like that. This is all you have to do to set up the class. And another advantage is you have your validations in a separated file. They are not in the same model. So this means that always your DTOs stays clean. As you can see, there is no data annotations or some other stuff because everything is just clear. Now, I'll implement a constructor over here, and here you can do whatever you want. So for example, we will have the email is required and it's an email address. So let's type rule for, okay, 
And we type over here the property, which is email, and I'm going to set here empty, not empty, sorry, which means it's not null. We can do this in another line. Dot with message, email is required, just like that. And then we will add email address, dot with message, enter your email is not a valid email address just like that for example so as you can see from its name actually it's very fluent so you can just define all your validations over here i'm going to mention the link of the fluent validations website so you can go to their documentation and check all the functions that they have and all the type of validation that actually they they have yeah so First name and last name are also required, so let's type rule for d.firstname dot not empty first name is required and length maximum length the first name couldn't be more than 25 characters which is makes sense first name not be or must be less than 25 characters just like this you can add the minimum length whatever you want but for this sample this is good now let's add the last name as well like that that's great cool so we still have the password p dot password dot uh, not empty of course Password is required, then maximum length is 16 with message. Password must be less than 16 characters. Or, yeah, why we are defining maximum length? We should define minimum length. Sorry, minimum length 5. Password must be at least five characters so for example this is enough now rule for b dot confirm password dot equal equal to p dot uh, password that was message confirm password doesn't match password so this is everything that you need look at that it's so fluent again actually it's very interesting and you can pass there is actually hundreds of other rules that you can do and other flexibility that you have but as you can see one of the main reason that actually allows everyone to go to flow and validation is to localize the messages that you have over here so you can simply uh, inject here your uh, your localized string and then you can uh, localize those the way you want you can add some logic you can add some validations in a specific uh, conditions like use dot when so you have to specify a specific object so for example validate the password for example just in case email equals equals to test so for example so you have hundreds of flexibilities and much more so I, as i've said i will mention a link in the description box so you can uh, you can take a look at uh, all the rules that you have over here so I think this is all what we need for this DTO and this is actually great. This is awesome. Now, the next step that we want to do is to implement the form. But also, as I've said, if we go to the login page, if I go to authentication or sorry, component authentication login form, I have typed this code over here. And so what I want to do is to move this code from here and put it in, a, in the shared project. Uh, we can... Uh, we can create a shared project or I will create another project called planner-app.services and this one will be used to create some interfaces. So here, instead of injecting HTTP client, we will inject, for example, iAuthentication service and then we can say authentication service.loginacing. And the reason why I'm going to do this, so first of all, I'm going to take this code that's responsible to communicate with the API to a separated project so I can always, man always maintain it from only one place. And the second reason is because uh, simply we want uh, 
as I've said at the beginning of the session, we are going to build different clients just right now with the upcoming one. So why we have to write this code again and again for every client? Well, I can put it there and then reference this code in any other project. And this is then why we are using .NET, basically, if, if we don't want to take advantage of a cross-platform and writing the same code for all the platforms and different operating systems. So this is what you are going to do for the next session. I hope like you get the idea of fluent validation, how you can implement it over here. When we will create the form, we will see uh, from a Blazor perspective how we are going to integrate the fluent validation with the Blazor. So that's a very simple step. It's one line of code, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.